Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a physics 7a practice problem on the topic of thermodynamics, processes and cycles. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as that really helps our channel. This is the problem that we're gonna be working on today. One mole of an ideal gas goes through an isobaric constant pressure process one from A to B and an isochoric constant volume process two from B to C as depicted below on a PV diagram. The gas does not go through a phase change during either process. The states are marked with circles and the direction of each process is depicted by an arrow on a line. Fill in the table below with your explanations. Note, calculators are not necessary for this quiz. So as you can see, I have everything over here. So I have my process. We have A, B, and then B to C. A to B is an isobaric process because the pressure is kept constant at two. And then uh, B to C is isochoric because the volume is kept constant at one. Basically, what we have to do is um, explain the sign. So we have to do plus, minus, or zero over here. And uh, then we have to compare the both of them and explain. So let's just go ahead and, you know, get started. Our review session in two cycles is going to be very useful uh, for this practice problem because we are going to be uh, looking at it a lot. So let's just get uh, started. Uh, let's just start with A to B just for the sake of doing this in order. So A to B is an isobaric process. With an isobaric process, we have these simplifications over here. Now, the first thing that we can figure out is the work. I, I would think that's the easiest part because for work, the sign uh, is defined by whether the volume goes up or down. In this case, when we go from A to B, the volume is going down. And when the volume is going down, that means that the work is positive uh, is positive because delta V is negative, volume going down. Now, what else can we figure out? Well, can we figure out um, can we figure out delta U? Well, can we figure out the change in temperature? Delta U is equal to changing the thermal, uh, which is number of modes times one half KV delta T. Now, this part is always positive. You cannot have negative modes, one half is just a number, kV is just a number. So basically delta T is what determines the sign of delta ATH and delta internal energy. Only delta T determines. So basically just as we figure out W because of delta V, then delta U, we get to figure out because of delta T. So essentially what we need to solve is, is the temperature going up or down. Now, in this case, we get to use our ideal gas law. So our ideal gas law is uh, PB is equal to T. Our pressure is kept constant, so the pressure is not really changing. The volume does change. Uh, the number of moles is not changing, R is just a number, and then the temperature changes as well, like this. So, oh, and this is true because this is uh, isobaric. Well, no, going from here to here is true because it's isobaric. This is the ideal gas law, this is always true. 
So what I'm trying to say is that if we simplify to these deltas over here, P is not changing, so you don't get to draw the delta. And then the only two deltas are delta V and delta T. We know that the volume is decreasing when you go from your initial state to your final state. And this must mean that your uh, temperature is decreasing as well. So because of this, our final answer is that um, delta U is decreasing because the temperature is decreasing. Um, is decreasing and then the explanation is that delta U is equal to change in thermal and that because this is isobaric that P delta V is equal to NR delta T and delta V is negative. You know the explanation can change. You know Please do not assume that you need to have the exact same explanation, the exact same words that I am putting. Uh, your explanation does have to make some physical sense, but you know, don't get too attached to the explanation on a word by word basis. Okay, so now that we have this figure out, the only thing that we have to figure out is, uh, the only thing left to figure out when going from A to B would be Q. So for Q, um, our equation is just basically this equation. So um, uh, where am I writing? Oh yeah, so delta U is equal to Q plus W. And delta U is negative and W is positive which means that, oh, sorry, uh, which means that uh, Q itself has to be negative because they have to add up, um, it has to add up with a positive number to make up a negative number. So the only possible solution here is that Q is equal to uh, a negative number. You can also solve for Q, Q is delta U minus, um, well, yeah, minus W, this being positive, this being negative, but then you have negative and a plus, so that makes a minus. So whatever you wanna look at it, because this has to be true, then uh, Q ends up being negative. Okay, so now we move on, and B to C is an, um, isochoric process, which means that the volume is kept constant. Now, the volume is kept constant, and what we know about work when the volume is kept constant is that the work is equal to zero because there is no change in volume. So your, um, this is equal to zero because delta V is equal to zero, so no change. And if one, if this is equal to zero and this is a positive number, then that means that uh, this guy is greater because um, because it's equal to zero and these are just magnitudes. So there's that. Okay, so now we move on and we're gonna do um, delta u. Delta u, again, we're gonna figure out by determining the sign of delta t. So we have to figure out the sign and uh, the change in temperature, whether it's positive or negative. And again, we are gonna use our uh, ideal gas, PB is equal to uh, nRT. Except in this case, the this is isochoric. So we have changing pressure, and then the volume is not changing, and this is equal to n r delta t. Uh, volume is not changing. N r is just another number that's not changing, and our pressure in this case, pressure is going up. 
So because our pressure is going up, that means that our temperature is going up when you go from this, uh, from this initial state to this final state. So this is positive because delta t is positive and then the explanation is that um, delta u again is equal to change in thermal and delta p times p is equal to nr delta t and delta p is positive. All right, so the last thing that we have to figure out is Q, and Q, uh, we're going to do the exact same logic as before. So um, delta U is equal to Q plus W. In this case, W is equal to zero, and delta U is a positive number. Therefore, Q has to be a positive number as well. So um, this has to be plus because uh, delta u is equal to q. So now the only thing that we uh, have to figure out would be this part over here. So let's just go ahead and do that. In order to figure out which delta u is greater, we have to figure out which delta t is greater because this is an ideal gas uh, and it's one mole for both of them and it's the same ideal gas so the total number of moles is going to be the same uh, kb is going to be the same so basically it all comes down to whomever has the greatest change in temperature has the greatest amount of internal energy so what we have to do is go ahead and find the three temperatures and then see how those deltas compare so ta is BA, BA, and R. So I'm just solving for T by sending this dividing. So PA, VA is um, 2 times 6. And R. And so this is minus 1, and this is plus 5. So this is 12 times 10 to the 4 divided by nr tb is pb pb divided by nr and then so for b we have 2 and 1 and r so this is just 2 times 10 to the 4 and r and then tc is um, B, C, B, C, and R. So this is basically uh, 12 times 1 and R. So this is 12 times 10 to the 4 divided by N, R. So basically this means that uh, delta T going from A to B in terms of magnitude is equal to 10 times 10 to the fourth and in terms of magnitude delta t going from b to c is also 10 times 10 to the fourth both delta t's are exactly the same so therefore these two have to be exactly the same going from A to B is exactly the same as the delta T going from B to C. And again, everything else on the equation would be exactly the same for both of them. So it came down to delta T. We then figure out that delta T has, uh, is exactly the same for both of them. So that would be our final answer for this. And the only thing that we have left is to figure out the Q's. So for the Q's, um, we have the equation uh, delta U is equal to Q plus W and for both of these processes delta U is exactly the same but for one of the processes uh, 
there is a certain amount of work, whereas the other, there is no amount of work. So that must mean that in terms of magnitude, um, Q1 or Q from A to B has to be greater than Q from B to C. So this magnitude has to be greater because when you think about it, so delta U is the same number, right? So delta U is the same number. Uh, this is negative and this is positive, but the magnitude is exactly the same. And in this case, Q is just equal to delta U. But in this case, Q is delta U plus something else. So that must mean that this magnitude is greater than this magnitude. And I'm going to go ahead and invite you to like put some numbers. If you want to say that this is negative 10, this is positive 10, and then just like create some values or whatever uh, to convince you that this is the case, then I'm going to go ahead and extend that invitation to you um, to just like go ahead and pause this video and figure it out. But that is going to be the case that because these two are the same magnitude, but this doesn't have any work that's adding, um, this Q must be uh, greater. So that will be all for today's video. If you guys have any questions, please make sure to leave a like and uh, I'm sorry, leave a comment and I will try to get to them and I will see you guys on the next video.